Around the NFL Podcast. The NFL machine doesn't stop. No, it does not. Welcome to another edition of the Around the NFL Podcast. My name is Dan Hansis. I come to you from a virtual room filled with some heroes. Greg Rosenthal's here. He's always here, though. You know who hasn't been here, but who's now back. You know who it is. He's the quiet star, Mark Sessler. Hey, buddy. Welcome back. Well, thank you. Um, I don't. I was trying to think, like, you know, what the happened Sizzler. to me. I don't think I've ever been away from the pod that long when the pod was going on. Um, it was, what, two weeks? I've, I honestly felt like I didn't work anywhere. Um, I thought I didn't have a job. It felt like I didn't have a job at all to some, to some degree. Very strange. <laughs> Isn't that um, your dream? Isn't that your dream, that disappearing in theory? I always thought it would be. Um, I, I, it wasn't my dream to go through like two trips to the hospital, no. but um, yeah, it was a bit of a bit of an well, odd couple couple you know days what, Mark? there. I think yeah. there's nothing good that comes out of a hospital stay like that. I imagine, and all the all the stuff that you had to deal with. But I know from my mentions and elsewhere, it must be nice to hear how many people were concerned for you and how many people missed you and how many people said. You know, the show's not the same without him, which is very true. Um, so that was nice, I'm sure, right? One little uh, silver lining. Yeah, I don't recall hearing from anyone, to be honest. But no, no, I, <laughs> th- th- we, I do think that whenever we've gone through stuff on our show, we have different, a different group of, of listeners, a different brand of loyalty. Um, and I think they're, mo- they're more friends than they are anonymous to us. And so you're right. I mean in my Instagram mentions and Twitter. Um, the, thank you to everyone that reached out. I've written back to literally nobody yet, um, but, I, but I plan to because, you know, I think like with other stuff that we've gone through as a group, like um, it's been proven over and over that like these guys are A plus. And so um, I appreciate the people that reached out for sure. Well, the listeners can't see you right now, but Mark's looking good. Not You, you sort of almost look like you were on a little tropical vacation. The uh, buttons are unbuttoned. The beard's looking good. You look a little tan. Um, so, you know, hospital stays, did you right? I guess. I don't yeah, know. I don't think I, I don't know what too. my message is here, but I did like the show starting with like, that's Mark Sessler. We should do that more too. I think every, I don't think I looked quite that. as fresh, um, <laughs> inside the hospital, but you know, it was a bit of a chore, um, removing myself from all of Erica's Hawaii pictures because that was sort of the second part. Right. Quick well, I was going to say like, America. you mentioned tropical vacation, Greg, you got it confused with the other person. <laughs> on the show that's erica tamposi who's looking tan and rested oh, after yeah. uh, her little sojourn <laughs> uh erica it's really nice to have you back i i will say that justin graver we call oh, him the grave digger oh yeah okay uh Let's he just did unbelievable work uh in your absence oh, yeah i mean he's got his own drop now and um so thank you to justin and erica uh welcome back <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, you know, Justin Justin did a great job while, while I was gone. Um, and you can have him full time. I'm happy to step away. I have a lot of other stuff going on that I would be, you know, I would love to take a step back if that's do you, what you want. Do you, are you mad at me? Honestly, because it sounded like you were a little yes. mad before the show started. Like some of the comments I made and things of that nature about yeah, your absurd vacation. You were upset about that. Absurd vacation. We have been locked in the house. Justin, I'm taking you out for the second. We have been locked in the house for two years. I've lost two people very close to me oh, who would have told me. me to, well, no, but I'm serious. I'm t- right. not talking about you. I'm talking about in general. Before the season starts, I finally decided to go and and have some friend time and vacation, which we all desperately need. And, and yes, it's like, it. oh, I missed the cut down days. I don't care who made the 53 man <laughs> roster. Like, good, have a podcast about it. Like, hey. I live my life. I have. You have to live. Yolo, life is too right? short. Hey, Yolo. Ricky, you deserve vacations. Um, and uh, nobody works harder than you. Um, I just wanted to let you know that Justin, he's got ambition and he's got talent. He does. And it doesn't mean that I want him to be our producer now, but I just want you to know that if that lights a fire under your hiney or not, that's not up to me to decide, but I'm just letting you know he did great work. Well, that's really great, and the listeners loved it too, and he provided – some people were even saying that Justin should be a fourth. I saw that flying around, which I think that would be really That was Justin's mom who sent that tweet, but, but, you know. (laughs) You know what? No, Justin is is awesome, Um, and, you know, as his boss, I'll take that into consideration. Mm. Oh, you should fire Justin. No, I would Oh, that would be an awesome move. No, he's amazing. He's You're really great. You're his boss? That feels... He, 
I I'm know, definitely getting weird? like Joe Flacco with Lamar Jackson vibes here. Like there are like the <laughs> Alex Smith types where like Patrick Mahomes, all, his whole career will talk about Alex Smith. What, what a great mentor he was to me. And then there's there's other other types. of. Someone mentors. tweeted at me. It was like, is Erica going to get Cam newton like by Mac Jones? <laughs> and I was like, can I just like enjoy my Mai Tai and like and enjoy your life? Cam Newton getting cut from your favorite team, which is something I know, that you would hope that was, for if so you were reading the Reddit board or your mentions during your Hawaii trip, that's on you. That's yeah, on. no, I turned them all off. So but, no, it was good. But it's good to see you guys and especially Mark and and be all together. And I'm really, um, you know, we'll get into it later. Obviously, it's been a, a really tough couple of days, yep. but. You know, besides that vacation and feeling refreshed and really, really kind of looking forward to the season and, and what's coming. So I'm glad you got away. I think it's well-deserved, Erica. You, I don't Mark. know what all the flack is um, about. And this is, and this is yeah. your last chance to fire Graver on the podcast. Yeah, no, I would never. Justin's, Justin's too Cause great. Because we, we would then go and get him back. We'd, we'd appeal to upper management so he right. wouldn't actually lose his job. But if, like, if anybody ever like, got fired on this podcast, that would be pretty cool. That's yeah, all. no, I, I actually, you know, this is it. I guess That's from a content standpoint. Yeah, I can't say it. But I, I had a big hand in, in making sure that Justin is here with us. It, well, see. well, you did say it. I mean, was that, is that you what you were it. not going to say? No, I mean, I'll just just say, like, I, I fought for him because he's he's the best. He really is. And you're the best, Ricky. Hand. And I will tell you that we missed you as well. Yeah. So this is very nice. And yes, this is once again, trying times. Um, around NFL media, we lost our friend Tara Deeker, and we're going to have Sheck on a little bit later uh, to remember a, a, a great friend uh, of all of ours. Um, but uh, just to have the four of us together as we now start a, a new season uh, without Wes, of course, but uh, I'm glad and thankful that we're all together here. Nothing could be taken for granted. That, that much uh, is for damn sure. Coming up on today's show... Oh, it's sandwich props. Go get my lunch. You disaster. <laughs> is this the ninth annual sandwich props? I don't even know. I guess you could check on the website, but this is our ninth season together, so it's possible. Well, it's one thing annoying. I love is Justin Fortier, who has been running GoGetMyLunch.org for a decade now. Um, you know, he's been tracking this for so long that it takes like five minutes to scroll all the way through all the wagers, Mark, to get through it. So, I mean, we really are, if nothing else, building out a real archive of content that people can go back to forever. Let's face it. I mean, honestly, if it is nine years, uh, Justin Fortier could have been in like, you know, eighth grade when this started and now a college graduate. I, think I mean, it's Nick Fortier. It's, Nick Fortier could it, yeah it would, it would be helpful if I knew his name um I mean he's he's do, you're he does so excellent obsessed work. with Justin like you're so <laughs> obsessed with him I just needed to get his name in one more time he seems very driven he's a hard worker um you know I give feel the sad drop, that Ricky. I missed his his time just give here. us the drop one more time no I'm not hitting it all right okay so anyway that's coming up can't wait for that and I'll have to check in with uh go get my lunch.org for any like outstanding Prop bets mm. um, that um, we started 2014 free agency, by the way, for, for there those you go. curious. Um, uh, but before that, yes, the season begins Tuesday. The defending Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers welcome the Dallas Cowboys to Raymond James Stadium. And um, we are going to now. It's time, boys, for our first game preview of 2021. Wow. Football is back. It's officially back. Where's that Priyanka Chopka song? Chopra? <laughs> Priyanka. Chopra? Priyanka. Chopra Jonas. Come on. Jonas, excuse me. I just call her Miss Jonas now. <laughs> Greg on the mean streets of West LA. What's going on over Had to go mute because the police were pulling up in front of his house. Hopefully not for Greg. Anyway, Thursday night football. Tom Brady brings back. We'll set it up this way, Mark. I'll tee you up since we've missed you so. Tom Brady is now 44. He's entering his, I believe, 22nd season in the NFL. And I personally, as listeners know and you know, waited 20 years uh, for Tom Brady to get old. Now, having a different perspective on things and Tom playing in a different place, I don't want him to get old because I think like everyone else, we want to see how far... Brady can take this thing, how far he could stretch the limits 
of uh, athleticism and uh, defying father time. But here's the thing that makes the Bucks special. The supporting cast around Tom Brady is so stellar that it's just the perfect spot for him. The Dallas Cowboys are a worthy opponent, uh, but at the same time, you have to love Tampa's chances here at home with all the pomp and circumstance. I'm with you. I think that you know Tom Brady had a, a flock of teams he could have gone to. And, you know, the Bucks stood out as a team that had a lot of talent, but always had issues at quarterback. And he's the perfect puzzle piece. They're the first Super Bowl winning team to return all their starters since the 77 Raiders, which tells you just how rare that is in terms of team building. Um, I think that, you know, we have a Bruce Arians, at coach who is, the fire is back. I mean, I know that for a number of years, I questioned if he (laughs) seemed uh, plugged in, but I mean, it's sort of the perfect suit. That's official now. It's official. He seems he nice. seems to be uh, determined to win. Good news. Um, I, I just look at I look at this game particularly as <laughs> when, when you don't have Zach Martin for the Cowboys at at guard. I think that you know the last time we saw the Bucks, their defense was dominant against an offensive line that had issues. I I, I don't like the way the Cowboys looked when Martin wasn't on the field last year. Um, the whole thing is the whole thing is this though. Like for me, we talk about Tom Brady and the offense nonstop. I look at this this Bucks defense. The way they're built up the middle, um, they have Nadam and Sue back. Um, they're essentially healthy with everyone except Jordan Whitehead. I, I do think the Cowboys are a worthy opponent, but I, I'd struggle to see them hanging around with the Bucks in this one. The Bucks, to me last year, and I, I think they are a team that you can say they can pick up where they left off, more so than other Super Bowl champs because so many pieces are intact. They seemed to just get hotter and hotter as the season went on. And if you look what they did after their bye week, that's sort of what that offense is and what it can be and i don't see one reason why they should be stopped in this game I, i'm not even certain it will be close i don't think it'll be close i mean they're they're a worthy opponent the cowboys are because like they can serve up a help the bucks serve up a 40 burger and who doesn't like that like if they do not go above 35 points in this game i'd be surprised if they do not uh win by more than what they're saying in the desert which is uh just outside of our our lock zone it's about i think it's just over a touchdown i'd be surprised this is not a game you want to be trying out things it's like the the cowboys don't have neville gallimore their their best defensive tackle so they're they're trying out you know carlos watkins is going to start at defensive tackle they kind of like him they have a, this rookie o, odigazawa who they like it's like okay we're trying that out we got these we got these new cornerbacks it's like nation right like oh we'll try we'll try that out a little bit we oh we brought in kz from atlanta he's going to be our safety not sure, sure about our like secondary depth we'll try that out it's like good luck this is the last team that you would want to play early in the season i think the bucks might not be that team in december but right now they're they're healthy they're ready to go. The preseason overly affected me watching their couple of quarters where they just look so on point. They could beat the Cowboys or at least put up 30 points, I think, with their backup skill players. I think you take out Evans and and Godwin and you put in Brown, Miller, you know, and Johnson. There's st- if you take out their starting running backs and you put in Gio Bernard, there's st- they take out um Gronk and you put in OJ Howard, they still would put up 30 points. I, I do not think they're going to be competitive defensively. The question is, yeah, what does Dak look like going against that Bucks defense? Um, just in terms of uh, buttoning this up, you mentioned, Mark, the 77 Raiders being the only other team or the most recent team to bring back all their starters on both sides. That team, the 76 team, went 13-1, and won, won the Super Bowl, obviously. 77 won 11-3. and three entered the playoffs as a wild card and made it to the conference championship. That's just a little history for you buffs. Um, what am I looking for from this game? I'm looking for Dak Prescott. Let's see where let's see where D- Dak's at after the mysterious shoulder injury that had the uh, the Cowboys contacting the Texas Rangers and the New York Yankees saying, uh, what is this? Uh, like, and then he took the time <laughs> off, and then by the end of camp, and if you're watching Hard Knocks, he's slinging it around, and we're being told no restrictions. Okay, but now we're going to play. So we'll see what kind of um, DAC we get in this game, if it's vintage DAC. And by the way, let's not forget, he's coming back from a ca- compound fracture of his ankle and a major surgery that went with that. Two surgeries, in fact. Uh, so that's something to watch here. I'm, I'm excited to see Zeke Elliott. Um, he's one guy on, on Dallas also. What is Zeke Elliott going to bring to the Cowboys this year? Because if he is the Zeke of old and not the Zeke of last year, 
and, and Dak is healthy with those great wide receivers, this team's going to score close to 30 points a game. And, th- and that's going to that's gonna win enough games probably to win your division. So I'm really interested in the offense and on the defense, just I'm um, staying Dallas-focused here. Uh, Micah Parsons, after a summer of breathless hype around the first-round pick, this special type of modern-day linebacker that can rush the quarterback, who could stop the run, who could cover a, a speedy tight end. Let's see if he develops into a star. Let's see if he gets his... Um, rookie season off to a great uh, start in a showcase game on Thursday night in front of 100 million people because that Dallas does a nice job developing stars on offense. They desperately need to develop a new star on uh, the other side of the ball, and that could be Parsons. I, I would note that you know last year with Dak, and they put up huge numbers on offense. They put up 17 points, 40 points, 31 points, and 38 points over the first four games and still went one and three. So there's a fair amount on pre- of pressure on Dan Quinn, uh, the new defensive coordinator, to put this thing together because I think Mike Nolan's experiment as a one-year coordinator last year was an absolute undoing of the Cowboys, a total disaster. I mean, players that looked good two years ago looked disastrous in that scheme. The word out of Dallas, though, is that a lot of these guys are happy with Quinn's scheme, that it's more aggressive, it's more simple in nature, where I think last year's was overly complex during a COVID, uh, you know, Zoom meeting type offseason. It was harder to pick up. So I do think that if, they, if, if, the, if someone like Micah Parsons can set off a defense and, and he fits in Quinn's scheme, that is your division winner right there. Because on offense, if they can do what they did last year when Dak was in the lineup, um, they're, they're somewhat unstoppable on offense, especially if CeeDee Lamb looks to be the way he He's been Amari Cooper has looked good in practice lately. He's healthy. So there's no question about the offense in terms of the star power and what they can put up points. When they, they finally have a coach that'll just throw it every down if you need to. So that's, that's part of it. Like if you have Dak and fantasy or, you know, you, you think the Cowboys will end up keeping this game close. It's like they could be down 20 halfway through the third quarter. And it just wouldn't be surprising for them to put up three straight touchdowns. Like, I don't think the bucks are that unstoppable that every single team, the Cowboys play, they have advantages out wide. And they finally have a coach, not Jason Garrett, uh, that will just like throw the ball every time they need to. Cause what's the point of running the ball against the bucks? They are literally one of the greatest run defenses in NFL history. There's not a real reason to think that's going to change now. And so I don't think this is like a, a Zeke run the ball too much game. And, and you never know. Week one is so weird. Sometimes you do see teams like get tired. Certain players get tired. Like, I don't know which team that's going to affect more than another, but I do think you get some weird like end of games in week one. So I think if that, if you're a Cowboys fan, that's what you're hoping for. But the Bucks, I think are going to think the opposite. And I think they're going to go tempo a lot. And like that, that's the type of thing where Brady wasn't that comfortable for most of last season. And now he's so comfortable in that system where they, they can speed it up. They can slow it down. They can do whatever they want to you. And I just, I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking like 47, 21. I don't Ooh. know. If we're th- no, maybe 47, 28. Let's give the Cowboys. And I want to tell you one thing. I, th- <laughs> when we did our West Hollywood podcast, um, I attempted to bring this up. And it was railroaded because it was too serious of a point when we were trying to have more of a, um, a lighthearted time, apparently. But uh, Gio Bernard, I think, is going to be a huge story for this team. Oh, I'm it wasn't, it this. wasn't that it was a serious point. It was like we were trying to, like, take big swings on, like, meaty topics. And you were like, keep an eye on Gio Bernard. But I'm telling you, led he the is going to be. He is, led the segment, he, too. He is what they were missing last year. I think uh, the kind of piece that Tom Brady you know, probably personally requested the same way Aaron Rodgers would want. I want this kind of James Whitish character that come in and he fits perfectly. I think he's going to be a huge part of their offense an increasing part of their offense as the, as the year goes on. It's crazy. I, I do remember those pat, some of those Patriots teams that finished strong and won the Super Bowl. They did. And, and this happens a lot with Super Bowl teams. They do come out gangbusters. They're like, they're confident. They're ready to go. Everyone's back. Like they, they are going to be a few steps ahead. I think of the rest of the league, especially the Cowboys. And there's no chance Tom Brady's getting old this year, right? I did I mean, he see played the last note. year with a knee injury. I did see the note that he's more than four years older than anyone else in the NFL That's what right I mean. now. That is crazy. I'm not doing the doubting anymore, but I just want to say he's, again, 44 and entering his 22nd NFL season. This is not a kicker. I think in week one, I think that he's got to take some hits. He's, I think it would have to be injury. I think that's where he could get old if he gets hit 
and something happens and then you can't recover up. and stuff like that. And that could happen anytime, certainly. But at this right. point, I'm not I'm not thinking it. No. Like if he's playing with a sore shoulder in early October, that could recalibrate the NFC. His arm looks so strong in that preseason game. I was like, it is literally stronger right now than it was in 2003. I'm not saying maybe, maybe, maybe not then like 11 and 10, maybe his peak, but it's stronger than it was at the beginning of his career. I, it's, it's I mean, he's regenerating, he's, basically. He, he's probably not growing <laughs> old. Exactly. And I think he's exactly his age is exactly like the median point between me and Greg and Mark. So, like, it's somebody we could all, like, look to. You know, <laughs> well, I'd have like, to look behind me. But, yes, I mean, he's I passed him in that, <laughs> on that category. Yeah. Uh, so you say a grizzly blowout, Greg. I don't think so. Okay, 47-31. <laughs> I'm going to keep – or 47-34. Give, give the Cowboys I was going to say because points. the Cowboys – going to be crazy points. And Dallas does not want to repeat the beginning of last season, and this is pre dak injury, which is, yes, they were – throwing for like 500 yards a game, but they were down three touchdowns in the end of the third quarter every week. So they were just slinging it. If it gets to that point, yeah, maybe it becomes like uh, over, you know, 70 points total. But I think they'll keep it a little bit close just because there might be a little, everybody's got to iron out some things early season. So maybe the Bucks don't come out humming like a total machine. I'll say 30-23, a nice game, but hmm. the Bucks take hmm. it. I will go um, Bucks 38, Cowboys 26 but not as close as even that score would suggest. Okay. So across the board, the Bucks will start the season 1-0. Looking forward to it, and we're going to watch it together at Lakeisha's house. We watched the uh, kickoff game last year at Lakeisha's and Wes's, and Wes was there with us. So we uh, really do look forward to, uh, as bittersweet as it is, to start a new season um, just being back in that house with Lakeisha and Link, that that would be that would be. In nice. the year before, and Deeker was there the year before. Yep. If you're thinking about it, we we watched the kickoff the last the last couple that's of years. Right. It's crazy. Um. All right. So that's Thursday night, and remember, we have our we're now on the regular season schedule. So you got your Tuesday podcast today, Thursday early. We'll record uh, the full week to come preview, previewing every game, and then. Uh, Either all of us or some combination of us will be back later that night to uh, offer the brief recap of the TNF game. And then, of course, this Sunday, the flagship show. We're still remote right now, obviously, but uh, that will be changing either next week or the week after. So we are off and running. And don't forget forget the the broadcast. uh, Yes. Do not forget the two hour supersized edition of of the Around the NFL broadcast on NFL Network premieres on Friday as well. Do we have a, t- a time for that? I'm so bad at the time. I think we have our taping. On I, th- I think it airs Saturday morning on the East Coast. Uh, it's a two-hour version. You know, the, the West Coast or UK. I believe you're it's 7.30 a.m. It. All right, perfect time slot. You got to start somewhere. 7.30 East Coast? Uh, why would yeah. it start on a half hour? That well, we're going to need to. I mean, people on the West Coast are going to need to set. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. I think it's a two-hour show, though. Erica, uh, get back to us. Yeah, we okay. we know that, and uh, I think it'll be good, though. We tried to marry up the podcast. It's going to be better for the podcast. Our Thursday podcast is going to be better, and our Friday TV show is going to yes. be better. That they're totally separated, so you can you can just like eat us up in many different ways. And like you know. BTW, it's more work for us to do it this way, but you know what we care about? The product. Little Barry Harlan, 7 a.m. Eastern. Season premiere of Around the NFL with Greg Rosenthal, Dan Hansis, and Mark Sessler breaking down the latest heading into each week of the NFL season. The two-hour show airs every Saturday at 7 a.m. Eastern. So yeah. we, got, we got that cushy 4 a.m. Pacific time slot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like the... More people will see us there, though, than than in the Friday afternoon, weirdly. It will be the best show on NFL Network within uh, a year, and it will find a cozier time slot. One thing I'm... It is two hours, at least. Well, so last year, we used our Thursday pod as both the pod and the television show. One hour of work, produced two hours of content for people. We're now doing three hours... We're doing th- literally 300% more work this time, if With I have my math pay. correctly. So yeah, we're, we're, you know, that's math. That's, that's right. Nailed it. I don't think I, ne- I, think I, never I actually got that wrong math talk, wise. I, I never get hear, sick of hearing you talk, Mark. I just want to hear you just talk about Gio Bernard in like every <laughs> possible format. <laughs> 
I will nail that prediction. Hey, it's Ricky. Have you guys ever wondered how the NFL schedule is made or what exactly it is that an NFL playing field is made up of? Answers to all these questions and more are available now on the NFL Explained podcast. Every Thursday, Aditi Kinkambwala and Mike Yam will be answering the burning questions you have about the game so you can dominate trivia or just be the smartest person at your next football watch party. This week, they're tackling how each NFL team got its name. You can listen to NFL Explained now. That's NFL Explained, with a period at the end, on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, it is time now. It's a tradition on the podcast. Uh, Everybody could do their basic-ass predictions. Uh, We do it, too, but with a twist. (laughs) Go get my sandwich. You monster. Oh, yeah. Yes. Mark missed the basic ass uh, predictions last week, so he's not going to have to be tied down to anything. It's very no. convenient. Mark, very convenient. Uh, a, a free a wild horse, a bucking Bronco, just rumbling through open plains. Well, no, I've filed them with NFL.com, though. So that's that true. I'm they're there. In. That's yep. true. Mark got cute like me. Like We were like, oh, let's pick a different team to win the Super Bowl than what everyone else is picking, the 49ers. And then like five five basic bros. <laughs> no. I'll pick the 49ers. It's like they're practically the most popular team. Did you happen to catch that show when I picked the Browns for the playoffs and Greg and Claybon did not? No, I did not I did not hear no. about that. Any thoughts well, on that? Well, that's it's very loyal of you. Well, where are they in your power rankings? I believe number 8 of 32. Mm. Well, that's a playoff team. So you so Claybon and Greg believe that they don't even reach the, the postseason. They don't play J- January football of any relevance, yeah. I- all I've right. never, I've never had a take. I believe in less than this one, but sometimes you want to like throw more teams into the playoffs that aren't gonna get there. So yeah, I wanted to get the Dolphins in, want to get the uh, Broncos in, and it's like only one, only one team from the North made it. Uh, noted. I, I don't believe this at all. <laughs> Come on, Greg, get off the fence. Can't go after Mark for being true. on the fence and then say Ma- like, like Wes. The, Wes knew the one thing to really annoy me in the world was when he would say I didn't even believe in a take that I said. And <laughs> unfortunately this take, this one is like the Browns not making the playoffs is not a take. I, I don't really believe in that. I, I think they're like eighth or ninth, but it's like, uh, it's just something will happen. I want to get, I want to get those Broncos. I want to sprinkle some other teams in there. Ridiculous. Concerning Greg. Got to have a code, man. I, well, I, I did. I didn't change the pick. I almost changed it online. And that was that was what Mark used to do. He would like make one pick online and another on the podcast. Remember that? <laughs> That's like, very smart. We like we like made fun of him for not having the Browns in the playoffs a year ago, and then he had them winning the Super Bowl. He like totally <laughs> fl- right. flipped it. Multiple right. outlets, multiple predictions. What is That's your you Super Bowl it. prediction, by the way, Marcus? We shared ours. I picked the. You picked Niners. the Niners to win because you had the same. Yeah, team. I picked the Niners to win over another team. I don't rem- even remember who the AFC team was. I don't think it was the. It was not the Chiefs. Was it the AFC team that hails from Cleveland? No, I did. I, Cleveland gets knocked out in the playoffs in my in my um, rock solid predictions. All right, check those out if you can find them on NFL.com. Let's get into it again. These are the rules of the sandwich game. Sandwiches on the line. You make a prediction. The other two bozos get the opportunity to either agree with said prediction or say no, 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 no. I challenge thee, I go the opposite direction of your prediction with a sandwich on the line, and it's all tracked at gogetmylunch.org. The, the sandwiches aren't, aren't changing hands as much, but guess what? You know, there's been a pandemic, and you know, it's so hard to see each other right now. That will be corrected in due time, uh, but no, uh, that's what's on the line here. As we go, let's go around the horn three times uh, with the final uh, prop you lay out. Uh, it's not a bet, uh, your onion hanger. And that's when you really say, I know I'll probably lose this, but I want to I wanna put it out there. I mm. want to show you that I have some, some onions, and sometimes you've got to hang them onions. I hope maybe uh, you try these <laughs> onions, you'll like them. They're real sweet onions. Let's get it going. I will start things off. And, uh, Greg, uh, Mark, I don't know if you were here for this show. at the. Oh, you weren't. So at the end of the preseason, I noted – the absurd uh, breakdown of the win-loss records, uh, the standings of the preseason, where the NFC had maybe like five wins in the entire preseason. It's filled with interconference games, obviously. And the AFC <laughs> was like mostly undefeated across the board. 
Um, and I, I questioned whether does that actually hold some water? I know there's, they're not real games or anything, but at the same time, when you look at the state of the NFL, and by the way, you mentioned power rankings, which premiered with me and Matt Money Smith uh, Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern on NFL Network. Check it out every week. When you look at the top half of the power rankings, it's very AFC heavy because the AFC is a much stronger conference right now. With that said, I, I hit up LA researchers here at NFL Network. We have a great research team. And I said, hey, what is the interconference? I think it's inter. Interconference record, AFC versus NFC. What is the AFC's winning percentage? Over the past five seasons, the AFC's 156, 162, and two versus the NFC. That's a 491 winning percentage. Okay, so history tells us, and as Chris Wessling once said, history is instructive. As history tells us, don't get sucked in here. If anything, believe in the NFC. I believe the AFC will better that percentage by 50 points. The AFC will pay, post a 541 winning percentage <laughs> so in <funny>. interconference <laughs> battles against the NFC in 2021. Who's coming with me? Who's going against me? 541. I mean, it's like a it's a pretty small sample size, so you probably you know you only have to be a handful of games over 500, right? To, 491 to, in to the last five out. years, Greg. Well, that's just say, they were just six under over five years. That's less than one game a year. So it's basically 50 50. Just give me um, facts, bro. Um, or one, it's actually 49 51 about. Right. Just why? <laughs> but I wonder what it was last year. You know, isn't that a little more instructive? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I want to root for the AFC. I, I don't like this stupid thing. Wait a minute. Then, it then needs that's to be easy, right? It needs what? to be 541 on the nose or just above? No, no, it just has it needs, to be at anywhere least 50 above percentage points better. Well, it needs take to be above 541. I'll take you on that. It's a very right, obscure, so it's a very strange um, prop. You could root I for AFC it. teams, uh, Greg, and still uh, go against me on this. I kind of do believe in the AFC this year. Uh, I'm not going to take you on it. Ooh, <laughs> You know, everybody, if you're a real veteran of this game, you know it's a win when someone doesn't take you because you usually lose. Uh, and that's one sandwich. Uh, okay. I mean, it, it's, I'm glad you brought that up. We are exactly tied, Dan, with a 52.1 percentage. We have almost the exact same record. One, I'm 184 and uh, 167. You have one less win and one less loss. Mark, Ooh. you're going to have to go undefeated for the next 17 years uh, to catch up. <laughs> even I know, even though, even I though you're like 47%. I played also played for the game so very long poorly out yeah, of the gate. But I, yeah. I think I've thrown some things out there that, you know, you're swinging for the fences um, with a low percentage of success. All right, Mark, so that, why don't you go next? So I got, so I got one sandwich one. with uh, Mark one. on that on the line. All right, I don't know how to top that, uh, the obscurity of, of what you just came up with, but um, I'm going to go with this. Uh, Baker Mayfield will throw... More touchdowns than Aaron Rodgers. Ooh, Ooh I'll okay. Take you on that. That's yeah. good. Okay, so let's take a look at something here because there's going to be some regression, I think, for Aaron Rodgers in terms of touchdowns thrown because all those advanced analytics tell you that things kind of all worked beautifully to get him to where he was. What was he? Forty-six touchdowns or something last year? Let's take a look here. Forty-eight. 48 yeah, that, touchdowns. That, that's which is, an outrageous number. That's like top five all time. Oh, it's like, it's like Aaron Rodgers. Like we, he's got to get some weapons around him. He's I mean, although 48 the, touchdowns. What the the two years before, the he manager. had 26 the year before that and 25 the year before that with Please full 16 games. Please set me games. up for success. Fire the GM. I've only <laughs> thrown 48 touchdowns this year. <laughs> Baker threw 26. So that's a 22 touchdown gap. That's a big gap to make up for. I will take you up. On that, but I like where your head's at because I think that Brown's offense is going to be good. I think touchdowns are a little more random than some other stats. So even if Rodgers outplayed Baker, Baker could have more touchdowns. It's not too crazy, but it, as Marks want to do, it's an onion hanger right off the top. I mean, he doesn't wait for the third one. No, yeah, I like that. Well, Baker, let's see. He, he's this is his age twenty six season, so obviously there's still room for growth. But after watching him for three years, I feel like I generally. Got a vibe of who he is and what his ceiling is, and that is of a the right side of the Dalton scale, but not too far. Like he's kind of, I think, like a Kirk Cousins type guy. Now Kirk Cousins can throw 36, 37 touchdowns in a good season, so I'm going to put 
Baker's like ceiling this year at about 35. Rodgers will throw about 35. So it's a, it's a good one. I'll take you up on it just for fun. Uh, but I bet they do finish within two or three of each other. I wow. think that's how it's – because I do think Baker will play well in that offense, and I think Rodgers will just kind of come back to – the pack a little bit uh, after last year's brilliance. Now, I think I'll realistically, you'd, you'd probably maybe need Rodgers to miss a few games um, for it to happen. But I think one thing about Baker Mayfield, if you take out the 2019 season, which, you know, that is part of his career and he did not play well in 2019, but the environment around him, if you just looked at, if you, let's say his career had been 2018 and 2020, I think people would look at him so differently and they forget how chaotic 2019 was. I don't think it's impossible that he has a breakout type campaign with the parts that are around him. He was having it. He doesn't pl- need to play any better than he did from week 12 on last year for them to win a Super Bowl. He really doesn't. Yeah. They could have won it last year the way he was playing. He he was playing great. He just has to sustain that over the course of a season. There's not a lot of reasons like on paper that they wouldn't. That they they have a top 6 7 roster. It's just it's a lot of any like concern for me is there is the division, it's the conference and it's the bad Browns mojo. Yep, just he's, like, he's yeah, a little yeah. streaky too. I think that's the other thing yep. about the Baker experience. Uh, there's going he, to be some ups streaky. and downs. He's going to be um, 14th. I'm doing the QB index once again. He is 14th. That's exactly where he should be on the, on the QB index. Going. Into oh, you're it. back with the QB index. I'm back. I like that. Nice. Inheriting from the great late Chris Wessling. Okay, who inherited it from you? What that's what right. a history to the QB index. Okay, uh, so we both take you up on that, Mark. I like when you get the brownies involved. Greg, you're up. All right, let's just go simple to start. It's one I we already talked about last week. Uh, the Broncos are going to make the playoffs. You know, Dan, Dan oh, yeah. wanted me to put sandwiches on the line that I would stand behind some tweet that they're in the divisional round, and I was like, well, eh, that's one step too far. You don't get to 52.1 percentage historically and go get my lunch putting them in the division round. Let's just have them. Let's just put this team that's been terrible the last two years into the playoffs. That's good enough. Give me a break. But you're doing it again. I mean, this one's not as egregious, but you're saying something in one format, and then when it's time to actually put up the money, put your money where your mouth is. I think is, them making the playoffs is realistic. Uh, them like winning a game possibly as a road team because you don't. It's going to be tough to win the AFC West. That's another. I think winning the playoffs is realistic. I think uh, Teddy Bridgewater is going to play well. I think the defense and everyone else will be even better. And I think they can get they can scrape out eleven wins. It's going to be tough to make the playoffs in the AFC. It might it might take eleven and six. I I'd almost think before. Vic Fangio could be out of there if they if they don't make oh, the playoffs sure. because they've got the roster to do it. Um, it really just centers around Teddy. I'll take you. On it, but I I, will, I say this, I think they're a playoff team too. But I'll do it just for sport. Then, but then you're counting them. It's like the Chargers and the Pats and the Steelers and Browns and Dolphins. Like all these teams, the Raiders, they all think they they can make it. I'm looking uh, for this tweet from Greg, but it, Greg is a surprisingly ro- robust tweeter. Um, oh, I found it. August 25th, I will remember who jumped off the bandwagon when Teddy is starting a divisional round game in January. That's so strong, Greg. That's a strong. Uh, that's a. But that's what the it's kids done call with a, a touch of mirth. Take. I mean, it's a. It's a. It's a tongue. Why in can't cheek. that How be you your? That? Why can't that be your sandwich prop? I don't understand why you're making it. Mm. I'm disappointed. Hey, why? That's why all. can't I be six inches taller? It's like this is the life you're dealt, Dan. So you're gonna have to make. <laughs> you a know choice. what? I abstain on this just because I have a fundamental disagreement with about how you carry yourself in this game right now. Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> I don't know about this Teddy bandwagon business any, either. That so one's on that bandwagon. Nick. I abstain. It's ridiculous. All right, up next. <laughs> one of these teams will post a double digit loss season. Now remember, 17 games. I don't want to, I'm not trying to rip anybody off here. So you have an extra week essentially to lose that 10th game. Pittsburgh, Chicago, New Orleans. Indianapolis, all playoff teams a year ago. Oh, wait, none of them are, or just no, one of them? One of them will lose 10 games plus. I mean, who wouldn't take you on this? If, the, if you put this prop in Vegas, this is minus 350. This is like, of course. I don't like know what the, that means. The odds are extremely strong that one of them would lose at least 10 games. Extremely strong. This is extremely this, strong. Yes, because first of all, the, the, that's like the Bears over under on on its own. 
Um, the other, you know, Pittsburgh is looked at as like a 500 team. I think that's a little low for them. Um, and then you're the new Orleans is a volatile team, certainly. And they're around a 500 team projected. It's like, so I have the, three this teams. This is the smallest. Uh, this onion is still underground. It's not even. I don't <laughs> this even know is, what. These are three teams with double digit wins a year ago and a Chicago team that, yes, went eight and eight, made the playoffs. Uh, but has this exciting young talent waiting in the wings? I I don't I hardly you just think said like, one of these teams. If you said three of these teams, sure, two, right? Two I even. I struggle to take this one because right, I think the Saints definitely two? <laughs> two, two. We got to go up to two. Two, I'll two, I'll take you on. Saints are a it? team in total Saints, transition. What? Steelers, you know, Pittsburgh, Chicago, New Orleans, Indy. Okay. Because it's like the Bears. It's like I'm penciling them in for twelve. So that just felt like whoa yeah. point. I don't think they're going to be good. That bad, huh? I mean, they could be better, but if I had to guess. Then I'm not really high on the Colts, and you just got to get one of those other two teams right. It's it's more reasonable. See how I'm not rigid, Greg? See how, like, I, you know, just, I'm just going with the flow. <laughs> well, I really, I have you're very flexible. I shamed you. I shamed you. <laughs> very nimble. <laughs> mine, I mean, mine is still – I was picking, like, an underdog. The Broncos making the playoffs is very much an underdog pick. You know, you were picking chalk. You deserve to be shamed. I think oh, the Colts are going to be bad, too. I'm not even going to take it. Bad? I don't know about bad, but, I mean, also, you can go 7-10. and 10, That's like an average team. So right. so you're still not taking it, Greg? I'm still not taking it. This really oh. goes against my... Uh, wow. My, By the know. way, 7-10 and 10 is an awful-sounding record, and so is, like, 5-12. and 12. I'm, not, I'm not into this. I'm with you. I, don't, I feel like we're, we're pounding the drum on this for months, but it's going to take a while. The fact that there's no 8-8 eight and eight teams anymore... No, it's absurd. I find that to be a real... You happen to choose two of the teams I feel like I'm most down on in the NFL relative to average, which is the Colts and the Bears. And so then it's like, well, and one of those other teams could could potentially mess up too. All right, Mark, you're up. All right. um, During the course of the season, it's not unusual for coaches to be fired um, during the season. In fact, it's happened. It seems to be more and more as teams get a start on finding their next coach. But... Something unusual will happen um, this year. It's not a firing. This happens very rarely, and I, I had to think back to um, <laughs> Butch Davis, I think, is the last coach I back, remember Mark. that did this. Well, I'm just going to say that. I'm worried it, about what's coming next. No, no, no. This is, it's pretty, it's pretty clear-cut that a coach will resign during Ooh. the season. Now, hmm. I, I, now out, this is out, that's the bet. That's the prop. <laughs> so, but I, I, I just say that um, what I would add to it, not as a stipulation, Nick Fortier, um, of, of the prop <laughs> is that uh, it, I think it will be scandalous. I think it will be something that um, causes immense waves through the NFL and becomes a, a trenchant um, story that does not go away, uh, but it will require the coach to resign. Can I tell a you coach. something that yeah. pops into my head? Two teams, and they're both connected by the same thing, which is a very toxic situation in our league right now. It's Deshaun Watson. Yeah. Could David Culley resign because of some ridiculous things going on behind the scenes and him realizing, what am I doing here? Why am I being set up to fail? What is happening? How about Brian Flores, Miami? What if they get off to a bad start and management pushes Deshaun Watson into the building and he says, wait a second, I love this kid, Tua. This is not fair, and I'm not on board with this guy coming in here. Just random, obviously, conjecture, but it just flew into my mind when you said that. So uh, I will not take you up. I will take you up on it, I will say. Uh, because I don't think it will happen, but the Deshaun Watson situation and how volcanic that is sitting out there makes me wonder <laughs> if that could lead to something crazy happening. Yeah, this is a massive onion hanger. When were the last resignings? I, I don't know the answer. But Bobby Petrino Butch, resigned. No, Petrino would be more recent than Butch Davis, but Davis that was had a like while a ago. Breakdown. Petrino just like left a note in everyone's locker. That was that was a, one of the more amazing moments. I've, is that what before or after he got the road rash face? When he was like was with his before. mistress on a motorcycle or something. That was before that. That was that, that guy was, was awesome. That was, that was later. Um, yeah, I'm definitely gonna take you up on this, and I'm happy that it wasn't too dark. I for some reason I, my mind immediately went to Gary Kubiak collapsing at halftime during the no, game. No, or whatever, I'm not, and I'm I just not thought you were gonna up. say like he can't, like a coach can't continue the game or he's like you know no. can't. So thank you, thank you. The night Gary Kubiak took a stroke on Sunday Night Football that was scary. Um, Interesting, Mark. And by the way, since we're on the topic of coaches, you've been out for uh, the last few shows, and I wanted to talk to you about this. Remember last month when we were like racking our brains trying to figure out who the one and done head coaches were? 
and the most recent guy was Freddie Kitchens. And <laughs> no, I, I, I got about four hundred tweets. Um, so from can you just be a, just that. be because we're all in a, we're all in a good place. We're happy to be back together. A new season. Did you kn- knew you knew Freddie Kitchens was on that list, but you just didn't want to surface it uh, in that conversation? No, no, I'm old and I completely forgot <laughs> that the scenario. Dan occurred. thought you were trying to protect like no. your <laughs> mental health or something, or just like protect the, the bad the bad name of the Browns <laughs> being mentioned, and so you purposefully no, withheld is... it from us. This was his theory. <laughs> Do you think that I care that much? I mean, it's like I, you know, it it was evident that we you did love as Freddie. A, as a group, we completely just botched that that conversation. <laughs> that wasn't a great one. Okay. Uh, good guess, though. We had Freddie on the show. We'll always, I'll nice always guy. remember that. Nice guy. Good guy. And, and Nick Shook good said guy. it as well. One of the best guys you could ever hope to have a, be belly up at the bar with at, at the uh, road hotel ahead of a Sunday game. Maybe he should have been back in the hotel room uh, prepping for said Sunday game, but he was drinking with Nick. And maybe that's why Nick doesn't work there anymore. Well, wait, there's, a lot, there's a lot happening there. Many layers. Yeah, speaking of onions, we're peeling back the layer of that onion. How did Nick Shook get from yeah. the Browns back to NFL? All right. Uh, Greg, your second. I, I feel like all my all my uh, selections are intended for you both to take them. Mark's got the biggest onions. Mine are medium. Dan's are the smallest onions so far. <laughs> um, You're still upset that I, uh, on principle, the least, I, this I two in a row that you. feel like fifty. <laughs> uh, this one's a little convoluted, but I'm gonna say that Terry McLaurin, the Washington Football Team's receiver, that I. I implored people to take in their fantasy drafts will finish with a higher ranking in receiving yards than the Rams seed in the NFC this season. So the Rams will finish in X place in the NFC. You know, last year they would have been what fifth or something fifth or sixth. Um, You know, when they, when they won their division and they had a buy, they were like the two seed. Terry McLaurin will finish in the NFL's receiving rankings. So basically counting on him to be a top five receiver this year at a higher seed or a higher number than the Rams playoff seeding. (laughs) This is madness. Wow. (laughs) Oh, wait till you see my next one. I decided to get as convoluted as possible. I'm like mixing like different, you know, this way I'm like getting almost two predictions in one sort of. So if you have, if you're a division winner that puts you in a top four seed, you're a top four seed, seven teams make the playoffs. It's pretty simple. And, and they do number everyone's seed one through uh, 14. So just in case they didn't, or 16, just in case they didn't make the playoffs, they, they would have like a, a ranking or a seed. I mean, you have the Niners winning the Super Bowl. Right. So I'm putting them down at like five or six. And McLaurin hasn't ranked, you know, that nearly that high yet. Um, but I'm projecting. Are we talking catches or yardage? Because he was yards, thir- receiving yards. yards. Okay. He was what 13th was- last year in yardage. Okay. He was 13th in yards. I'm, I'm projecting him, you know, to finish higher than the Rams seed. Wait, what if the Rams he has to stay the healthy too? They do rank them one through sixteen. You get you right. get a, a ranking in the NFC, well, whatever their NFC ranking is. Because I so. I think it's important to have integrity and have it line up with your predictions. I have the Rams making it to the Super Bowl, um, and although Oof. I don't break it down uh, where they finish, I saw them as a division winner. And I'll just say, let's say they're let's say they were the number two seed. I'm just going to go with that. So. McLaurin uh, needs to finish first. Then he needs to finish yeah. ahead of so the seed. So he has seed. to finish ahead. So yes, I will take you on it. Um, and I think McLaurin could be a top 10 receiver. He could be number seven or eight and be a superstar this year. Uh, so it doesn't define failure if he can't out gain the Rams seed. And anyway, <laughs> I'll take you on it. I, I like where you're going with this. Um, I will take you to, I actually, a, a sandwich prop that I'm not using uh, was that the Rams would miss the playoffs, but the Chargers would make it. Wow. Um, sending, you know, a lot of L.A. based journos into a tizzy. Um, but I, you know, I know that, you know, I, I'm trying to repair my relationship with the Rams, considering that we're moving into their house like in mere days. Um, right. So it's not a Rams thing, except that I do believe in McLaurin. And I think that uh, right. you're on to something. I can root for the Ram. I mean, uh, my daughter is a Rams fan. I, you know, a, f- a five seed's fine or a f- even a four seed and McLaurin comes in first. Either way, I'm, I'm fine. I think it's Excuse good, me. Mark. Like you want to be more a Cato Kalen type. Um, you want to be a nice house ga- guest. You want to be non-offensive. You keep to yourself. If you hear a thump in the night, don't check it out. Like just <laughs> no, just do what you got to do. Okay, stay in the guest house and, and hopefully a similar career path as him. If I uh, am lucky enough. All right, last round. Now here comes 
The onion. Today I'm going to show you a little bit about growing huge onions. Okay. Okay. I got my boy, Zach Wilson, as the offensive rookie of the year. You guys can take the field. How's that, Greg? That's fine. I'll take it. That's good. That's a nice onion hanger. Oh, thank Get in the field. Just because there's a lot of there's a lot of good options this year. I can't remember. And I guess it makes sense. There's so many offensive players taken at the top of this draft. This quarterback class looks amazing. I can't remember there being this much ex- excitement over – 10 to 15 rookies. So absolutely, I'll, I'll take you in that. That's, that's I love it. I'll take you too. Um, I, I don't know if he's in the best uh, roster scenario for that to happen, for the, for the numbers to be there. But I think you've, got, you've found your quarterback um, from what we've seen so far. Rookie of the year would be the biggest Jets story in two decades. Right. I mean, Sam Bradford won offensive rookie of the year. I think just because like he successfully walked from the bus to the field every game without falling, like that was the level of rookie quarterback play back then. He was he was right. not good. He was like the twenty eighth quarterback in the league. Zach Wilson is going to have to be good uh, to win this award because there's just too many other good good options at at receiver and and quarterback. The one thing though, like let's say that Trey Lance for some reason is splitting snaps with Jimmy G till the middle of the year. Justin Fields continues to be um, put through the ringer in an absurd scenario in Chicago, and they don't play him. They continue Andy Dalton. That gives Wilson a, a, a jump. I mean, they have literally no other quarterback. Yeah, yes. and Mac Jones. Does. Mac Jones has a chance. I wonder where um, Zach Wilson ranks in like the uh, the predictions that are out there right now. Trevor Lawrence is first, tied with Mac Jones. Surprisingly. Field second, Lance and Zach Wilson next. I think there, there's a lot of banking there on like your team needs to win games, which which makes yeah. sense. That's you know who I think uh, Tony Romo picked. Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson. Let's listen to what Tony had to say uh, about the Jets rookie. It's rare for me to say someone has the ability to get in the stratosphere of a Mahomes, but I think this kid actually has that ability. So uh, when you have a quarterback like that, I think. There's no telling how good you can be. He can make up for a lot of weaknesses in a lot of areas for a football team. I think Zach Wilson is going to be in discussion as one of the top three to five quarterbacks very quickly. You know, within the next couple of years, I think you're going to see him rise and just, I think he's unbelievable. His ceiling is so high. Maro. Now, uh, Tony Romo <laughs> likes Sam Darnold too. That should be stated. But that just, I mean, if that doesn't get you pumped up as a Jets fan, I don't know what will. I think you should have that like tattooed on your back. That entire <laughs> statement from Romo. If 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 I will, if Zach Wilson wins an MVP uh, or a Super Bowl in the next three years, I will do that. The whole statement you'll have. Ta- well, I, w- I hope I we can all come Affleck and watch. My back. I'll Affleck it. What size font though? I mean, it can't be. We need. To, uh, needs I'll do to the be a one, very noticeable. I'll do the font. wacky nineties one. Mm, what is it? The yeah. Comic Sans font. You can't. I mean, it's going to have to be small because uh, there's a lot of words there. All right, three years. So that's the 21, 22, and 23 season. I'm looking forward to tracking this one as the Jets like march through the 2023 playoffs and Dan starts like having mixed feelings about it. And if they three-peat over the next three years, I'll get it done in all different parts of my body. <laughs> oh, I'm rooting for this. Back, front, buttocks. Buttocks. This is what it took Onions. for me to become a Jets fan, but I'm finally here. <laughs> well, it's a big treat for Emily, your wife. She's gonna have it's. There's gonna be a lot to discover. All right, let's uh, let's uh, keep rolling here, uh, Mark. Yours. All right. Um, I feel very strongly about this. I'm not. This I'll take not a, it. I, I will well, take. Uh, my, take I it. will take your onion hanger side. Okay. Scene. I, I I think you're gonna want to. Um, but again, I I want to say that I this is not um a gag. This is something I feel very um dug in about. That there will be a major. We will look back, and we will. And I, you can try to not. You can you can try to spin it and say that you don't agree that it was um, what I'm about to say. That it is a top. It is the number two news story in the NFL um, outside of the coach resigning. That it is so. It will at least be one or two biggest story in the NFL. Um, will involve something to do with an NFL cheerleader. There will be a story involving an NFL cheerleader that will be considered a um, an sort of an earth-shattering type uh, breaking news scenario. So he did, Mark the eventually scope. got to an uncomfortable place, uh, Greg. It just took one more question. No, I don't think it's, it doesn't, see, you're, that's where your mind goes. I mean, she could be involved in a bank robbery. I don't know. It could be any sort of thing. I mean, she could steal a horse. That's uncomfortable for the people in the bank, you know? Well, that would be, that would but be, but it doesn't news, suggest it's that. It's bad news you know, for the cheerleader, basically, you're saying? It's like a scandalous uh, I, situation? It's just, I, like, all, there would be no question that the cheerleader is a pivotal 
um, centerpiece, a core centerpiece of the story. So I don't. Like a, I'm not a Patty trying Hearst to, type thing. All right, like I know, if, but then if I say if that, like OJ like, Howard no. marries a cheerleader, that doesn't qualify. You just, I'm gonna try to help you out. You said this would be one of the two biggest stories of the year, which I don't <laughs> even know how you would rank that. Like we should, we should try to make it like, uh, you know, this yeah, is a, a seismic story, including a cheerleader. Happens. So like I, the, top the cheerleader, two is okay. how about kidnaps how about the vice si- president? Like that's a huge story. Like are we talking like that level news story? I'm saying it will be because I've already talked about the resignation of the coach. Um, sending, you know, shockwaves through the league. So I, I can't, I don't know if it's going to top that. When you look, when you do your like a year in review, yeah. this cheerleader story will be a devastating. All right. Um, one of the biggest stories of the bro. year, yeah. you know, involves a cheerleader. Yes. Let's keep it right there. Doesn't it's, sound good. Whatever it is, it just doesn't sound good for the cheerleader. It's not we a don't player. It's not a player marrying a cheerleader. That that because like that's one, not a huge story. Like, yeah, that's one. That, there's year. no news value to that. And it you you can think it's bad, but maybe it would be something um, like the cheerleader goes to space or something. Sure, it could be trans. Well, I don't know. I, I that to me feels like blase news to some degree. That's a pretty degree, big too, story. I guess it's big. I don't know. They're like the head cheerleader of the Dolphins uh, blasted off with SpaceX or something. That'd be like that would get a lot of play in the national news cycle. I don't know if it's the biggest story, second biggest story of the year, but. Well, I think we've removed second biggest story because it's too hard for us to, and you'll you'll just claim that it's not. So we're taking that out of it. All right, uh, Greg, we we got you, and then we got our annual Ricky prop. So Greg, uh, okay, yeah, my, I, um, here we go. I don't know if the onion's any bigger than the first two, but it is more convoluted even. All right, three teams from the AFC East will have more victories than the amount. Of consecutive pictures. What is happening with you? <laughs> well, you stopped me. No, uh, all right. Three teams from the AFC East will have more <laughs> wins this season than the amount of consecutive pictures Mark Sessler once oh, no. posted on Instagram of Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet. You are not allowed to go look at the Instagram and see how many. Mark probably knows. I do help. You know, help. Do you know the number? Well, I Did went you to do check. your research? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, so you yeah, know. Yeah. Okay. I, I went to check, and Mark probably knows. I do. Um, uh, but, I remember yeah. that day. That was an infamous day. It was many days. It was more it than was one day. A couple weeks. For, for sure. Uh, many consecutive pictures. Three teams from the AFC East will have more victories than, than that number. <laughs> Three teams well, so I know AFC what the number East. is. And yeah, you know what the number is. You could help out, Dan, if you really want. You know I, the I, number. I, th- I thought the mystery was kind of part of the fun, but you know, you can do whatever. The you number want. is nine. It was a it was a yeah. solid three three that. three. Instagram. Yeah. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have allowed that. No, the the Pats either the Pats or the Dolphins will bust out and under um, and um, and they will underachieve. So I do not think three teams will do it. So I'll take you up on it. But that was an amazing. I shouldn't have let you on, find on out. Instagram. <laughs> but you can't I thought, know the info in my, if I don't know it. Right? I guess. In my yeah. mind, uh, in my mind, I thought it was possibly 15, and someone would think that too, that it was just like an impossible number to top. Because I, I was guessing, well, going into it, I thought it, that's got to be double digits. It turned out to be nine. Well, I was going to continue on with it. Um, what happened, I'll tell you real quick, was that my wife went on a like one of these girls trips with her friends, and they were sort of saying, why is your husband posting endless Leonardo DiCaprio, oh, so Kate Winslet photos. So I I got a talking to or like, it's a little too weird. Please stop doing that. And so then the, the air kind of got let out. Um, nine wins. <laughs> I got a question about it at one point. Just someone was like, what's up with Mark's... Uh, like, is it... Pictures? For Simone, is it any worse than when you like pick, uh, post pictures of your... 1992 girlfriend from uh you know lake happiness or whatever i am not nor because i'm not doing that that's not something that i'm doing so lake happiness <laughs> all right okay okay um all right do, I, will, are we I will all set take, there i will take yeah. you on it just okay, because i'll do you. everything thank you all right good all right ricky you had one I do. Okay, so we know that there's been a little bit of mm, trouble in paradise with Michael Thomas, and now he's on the pup list till that puts him after their bye, Ooh, right? Mm-hmm. So Marquez Callaway totally exploded mm. in the preseason. So what I am predicting is that not only is he going to be the wide receiver one, especially with Jameis Winston for the Saints, but he is going to make it questionable to the point where Michael Thomas, even when he's back, is going to be, um, 
you know, I guess lose the starting spot. To He'll Marcus be a number Kelly. two, not yeah. the number one. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, how, do we, how do you how do we quantify this? that? Yeah. Well, he's maybe now, he, he's not maybe a starter. He doesn't even, yeah, maybe he doesn't even play. I think that Marcus Callaway is going Ooh, to. Ooh, I got it, Ricky. What if we say when whenever Michael Thomas returns, from that point onward, whoever has more targets between the two guys. How about yes. that? Yes. Hmm. So you I, say I, like, Callaway I think will have more. Dan targets is helping than you out Thomas. because your first two things you threw out there, we could have been mean and been like, "Yeah, there's no chance he's getting benched." Um, yeah, but why? But what if he does? Like he's there's been trouble in paradise with him there without like Drew Brees too. Like. It could happen. Like Marcus I could, I could buy targets Thomas. Okay, I could buy a a, a trade. I thought that's where you were going. Well, maybe this. I'm just. But saying, if he's there, if he's there, he's not sitting. He's gonna deep so I'll take Michael you up Thomas. On I'll, yeah. I'll take you up on it. But it's not. It's not crazy because Callaway will out target Thomas if he's traded uh, before Halloween. Also, so yeah, mm-hmm. these things are but you're, right. factored in. You it, we we to clear it. You know, to make it clear for Nick, out target him from the moment that Thomas returned to the right. field. Because right. yeah. I'll take you up on it. I love it um, because I think that you're onto something that, you know, even if Sean Payton says that, you know, he's he's sort of back in a good place with Michael Thomas, this has been going on for over a year. Mm -hmm. This isn't the guy uh, that they thought he was a while back. I mean, I do think he's uber talented. So if he's healthy and they need him, I don't think you're going to win this. But um, I think it's possible that he's traded. All right. Mm. If he gets traded, what? So if he gets traded, you win, or is it just the yeah, target? I think they you don't definitely want win. Michael Thomas. They want yeah. Marcus Callaway. Also, to be Thomas the guy. could also come back and not be healthy because he hasn't been healthy since right. this time last year. All right, mm. that's good. There you go. Close up the books. Nick Fortier, go get my lunch dot org. Uh, please uh, check him out. Give them a fo- give him a follow on Twitter too. Or go get my lunch on Twitter, and we will, of course, as we always do, we will cycle back and uh, take a look. Circle back, I should say, and take a look at these props come the end of the regular season. Okay, without further ado, let's welcome in. Whoa. There he is, the legend. He's doing the thing, by the way. This is a thing the kids are doing in Shecky's too, where it's thicker mustache. The beard comes in. You see Aaron Rodgers is doing it as well, but this is a look, and Sheck has it. What's up, Dave Damashek? It's looking good. What? What's the poop, fellas? Can you hear me okay? I don't yes, know if my can. connection here in Lake Happiness is coming through. <laughs> is it? <laughs> I, 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 you know what? I'm sure you guys have first-rate equipment. We can hear Rosenthal up there on Mount Pius, so that's fine. You guys are getting <laughs> what? Well, what's what? What Pius is going on? I don't know. Your ease of throne or whatever the hell you uh, the hell else you guys talk about. <laughs> By the way, I mean... glad you guys are still doing the show. Good for you. Yeah. Um, I'm happy to, I'm happy to see that, that you guys continue to press on. Um, I, I, I would love in on some of these, uh, some of these wagers, like for mm. instance, you know, that the Los Angeles chargers are in fact going to win the AFC West. We, mm. we, 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 well, we know we'll, we'll let you, if that want, if you want that to be your That's sandwich prop. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll take you up on that. Can we, can we throw Damashek in chargers yeah. win the division? That sounds like three delicious Promancy brothers. You I'll have to take order. you too, but I think you're right, though. I what think is, you're right. Wait a second. So the Chargers finish with a better record than the Chiefs? Win the division. Whoa. Or <laughs> win, on the top win the division. That's pretty wild. <laughs> I like, I like it. That. It's not that wild. I mean, is the is the Chargers' defense markedly better than the Chiefs? Yes. Is the Chargers' offense markedly worse than the Chiefs? No. Ergo, I'll take mm. Staley's company. Um. Dan's not used to onions this big. He's been tending this little <laughs> tiny onion. Garden. Who hurt you, Greg? Oh, I did when I had a stand on principle with some of your nonsense earlier. I feel a little bit bad. I really do feel a little bit bad for Hanzus in this one here because, you know, Rosenthal, you know, okay, one year blip, Tom Brady dumped him and Belichick and everybody else. But I suspect Belichick will rise back up here. Um, and, 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 you know, Sessler, I, you know, let me be the first. And if I'm not, I, I want to get in on it. Here right we go. Now. You've already well, done I, this actually on this show. Well, I want to do it again because, uh, <laughs> because I'm a man of the highest integrity and I'm a class act. That's what I, uh, you know, that's how I, I view myself. And I think we all agree on that. And I want to say, listen, Cleveland Browns, everybody agrees universally, brilliant front <laughs> office, you know? <laughs> Head coach comes in. What's he do? First year coach of the year. Best <laughs> roster in the AFC. Maybe all of pro football. One, two punch at running back. Best in the biz. Fancy pass catchers. One handed or otherwise. And best news of all, the 
first overall pick just a few years ago at not just this sports, but all of sports, most important position, bake. What could well, possibly go wrong? I want to say congratulations, Browns fans. Go wild. This is your year. No, this is another attempt at psych warfare, psychological warfare, which, you know, I it's been a long off season for you. Um, you're used to talk about throne of ease. It's just been one division title after the next for the Steelers. Big Ben is your quarterback. You're now being chased and dogged by questions of when he's going to fall off a shelf. Um, if the team is, you know, psychologically ready to pick up the ball again after getting smushed by Cleveland in January, which, Ooh. you know, I know, Dave, that was that uh, quietly that injured you that that it lifted I me up. I was humiliated. It was a humiliating I, 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 defeat. Nothing's quietly loss. with Dave. Yeah, we heard about it. <laughs> darkest loss in Steelers history. And that's not high. Wow. Wow. I'm not being Which history Which is just another way to that. throw shade at the Browns. We I see what you're doing, Dave, and I appreciate it. No, I think I think in <laughs> hindsight, I think the pain will will go away when I realize that that was just uh that you know that heralded the rise of the Cleveland Browns. And you know, we were their first real big victim as uh, they took over all of pro all right, can you can you guys take this to the minus three podcast <laughs> i mean okay i don't know what we'll you want to talk about it's an exciting story it's an exciting dave time Demsher, for everybody accountant for taste minus three pod the extra points pod dave's a thunder get cut get caught up on that back back catalog with uh, your buddy feeney um having dave on because yes uh we lost tara deeker um this weekend to cancer, which is just outrageous uh, and tragic. Uh, we lost we lost Wes the day before the Super Bowl in February. We lose Deeker right on the eve of the start of the season. Two of the best people uh, that any of us knew. And I just want to say, like, having Sheck on the show is important because Deeker's introduction to our audience and Sheck's audience was really through the pie off more than anything else. And I think it was so cool that she was so passionate and such a great, fun woman that she had that uh, spotlight that Dave, you allowed uh, her that opportunity and she made some great pies and we're all going to miss her a lot. And we just wanted to um, just talk about Deeker and how much we're going to miss her. And, and what, what does she mean to you, Shaq and your time at NFL media and beyond? Yeah. I, I you know, uh, heartbreaking beyond, uh, you know, our ability to sort of, especially you, you, you mentioned Wes there and I texted Deeker, I think, right around a year or so ago, just checking in with her, knowing that, uh, you know, she was going through her health stuff. And I, I caught her, um, or in fact, she called me back and she was um, on the way to pick up Wes for his chemo treatment. And that is who she was doing the the tough stuff, the heavy lifting of friendship. Mm. And she did it to everybody, you know, that was, she did it for everybody. And as I, I just keep saying, that's how, she made everybody feel like a million bucks and yet she still had a, a deep enough well that if any of our kids came around then we were uh, yesterday's news and they were the focus <laughs> and from the moment she met them for the rest of the time you would ever interact with Deeker if it was every day every week or if you didn't talk to her for for three months it was always first and by their nicknames, where I was concerned, by my little, and, you know, I have somewhere between three and 17 children, whatever it is, she knew all their nicknames, <laughs> always asked questions, all, you know, and that was her way with everybody who she dealt with. And I was talking to our our mutual pal and producer over there, Drew Christensen, uh, he had the bad statitude, um, and a close friend, of course, as we all were with uh, with Deeker. Um and he said, you know, that's something I thought was poignant that it it always felt as though she never it was her in any circumstance. She devoted herself to not being the center of attention. And yet she was always the center of attention. And that was no small feat. That's no small hmm. feat in any workspace in any gaggle of friends or otherwise. But think about the big personalities that you know, that we've worked with over the years, pro football players and Greg Rosenthal and people like that, you know, and, and, and um, I kid, but you know, she, she was that way with every single person, the hall of fame, whatever football guy, or, or um, you know, somebody who was um, uh, one of the security guards. She was that way with everybody. And 
I feel like, you know, I, I, I feel like in the movie, as good as it gets, Nicholson gives that great speech to Helen Hunt about Helen Hunt and her greatness. And I, I was worried. I, I don't love taking to social media to, you know, to, to lament something like this happening. It feels, it doesn't feel quite right to me. It, uh, it didn't feel quite right to me, but it occurred to me that she made everybody feel so good that I want the world to know this was a, mm -hmm. this was a great soul, a special soul. And, and the speech Nicholson gives is if you remember that he goes to see her and she's a waitress in the movie and, and he, and he tells her, I feel special because I see it with, with you, Helen Hunt. And I felt like in talking to Drew Christensen a little bit and to other people, um, you know, I feel special because I know Deeker, uh, know her period, but know her greatness. Um, and I'm, we're all lucky to have known her, but now I've come to realize and I've seen the posts and it's the same recurring themes. It's about that she was a light and she was a delight and she was, um, so kind to everybody. Um, and now I realize that I don't have to have that concern. At least everybody got it. Everybody got it. You know, there we, so we were all lucky. And I think we all get that we were lucky to know her. I feel bad for the people who didn't know her, but I, I feel that I feel like, boy, her time was well spent because there's not anybody who knew her and she knew a ton of people mm -hmm. and, Everybody seem, seems to have landed on the same stuff. She was, you know, I we can wax poetic about it. And otherwise, it plain and simply, she was the best. That was it. What what more can you say? We should all be like that. She um, she was like a like if you think of the NFL as like a like a locker room. And I don't think of the NFL Network as like being amazing in terms of team camaraderie. She was like the ultimate glue glue person like mm -hmm. she had a meaningful relationship like you were talking about with everyone at the company from like the part-time people who are cycling in and out for seven months that she would make like them feel great to the highest executives at the company to the to the biggest name talent you know at the company everyone almost had a relationship because she didn't give you an option to or not and if and if you didn't like something was wrong with you like if you couldn't go along with it because you're right like in a in a place of like big personality she was still the loudest like she was the most she was the most bombastic um and and there's just something about it, her that like you you couldn't put her in a box and that you just, you love, you loved every, every minute of it. I, I was, I'm, I totally agree with you, Dave, about like the, how you feel about posting and everything, but it did feel good to hear all the stories of everyone else's kids and realize like, Oh wow. Everyone had those experiences. She would invite, you know, me and my kids over to this place she house sat and she had a pool at and she'd, you know, have desserts ready for them and have things to play. And, and like, it'd be like a beautiful afternoon that she just wanted to like set up for the kids. And this is during the pandemic and during her um, fighting cancer. And she, she was just such a good friend um, to, to everyone. It, it really, it's, it's been a brutal, it's been a tough weekend. We're like depressed, angry, um, mad. Um, but also like hearing, hearing this stuff, she, she was one of a kind. Yeah. I think we've lost like, two incredible lights over the over during this off season and it's been uh, this this um the timing of this was very rapid towards the end too it, it completely threw me off and it kind of just reminded me of um you know maybe i could have texted her one more time called her one more time but i also look back on her and i, I like what you guys said because um i think we did have in a way all very similar relationships with her because she had a special talent of making you feel uh, when she'd be hanging out with you, like you were the best friend she had. And it, and it was genuine too, because she would just pour herself out and pay attention to you and listen. Like um, I remember one Thanksgiving when I was working in the newsroom and there's like, you know, two people in there and she um, brought over this huge plate of food from like the, the real talent um, <laughs> spread of food, not the kind of thing they threw in the, in the lunchroom. I mean, it was like little she things would like always that. do that for us on Thursday nights yeah. er, er, yeah. very early on 2013, 2014. She would like, she would sneak us over so we could get better food on Thursday nights. Cause she didn't think it was fair. How that about we the were drink tech? Yeah. The, the drink, drink tickets, tickets at the holiday party. <laughs> yep. She always that, had the, she was the source. 
Right. That dates back to when, you know, we just started here as a group and, you know, it, there was no one person more important than the other. And, you know, one special memory of ha I have of her is that she called me up one day and she's like, dude, like, you know, it was when Once Upon a Time in Hollywood came out. She's like, I have tickets, one ticket, um, guest ticket to like the media premiere. And it was on this like 70 millimeter perfect screen. And it was like all journalists. And she brought me to it. And we drove, you know, up into the depths of Hollywood. And, and the, the thing I remember is not so much the movie, but the drive up. Um, she was just unveiling things about her life previous to the NFL. She's friends with like Nev Campbell. She knows like tons of celebrities. She was in Everybody. that industry. She hung out with Quentin Tarantino and she <laughs> dropped that bomb on me as we were driving up. She just was a person, a multifaceted person that you talk about how she was able to get along and show her heart and be loved by so many different types of people at the NFL. I think that's just who she was with everyone in her life. And I'm still figuring out how to even respond to this. Um, she's a really special person and I'm with you, Dave, that I feel lucky to have been her friend. And she made me feel like a real friend. Well, I mean, she was uh, prison loyal, you know, when I, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, and for a vain guy like me, it was it was striking to realize like oh you're that way with everybody i feel a little let down i thought i was special oh no you're that you do that with everybody and if i if i take a step in the wrong direction about another one of the people who you're that loyal with you'll let me know about it and she was like is, even like that with everyone but henry right. had a, like a little he was like a little above I, a little everyone. bit more it's a little i do special. agree with that i do agree with <laughs> handsome hank and and their special well, relationship that was love. But it engendered, but her loyalty engendered that. I mean, people would, and it would play as half funny with the aforementioned pie offs. She would go around and she would, uh, you know, she did uh, gorilla uh, sales. She went around to everybody, taste this pie. I mean, she would prepare for months on end trying to unseat uh, the mighty Hanzoos Corp and its <laughs> stranglehold on the pie off. Um, and she would solicit the opinions of everybody. And when she lost, Willie McGinnis and Ike Taylor and I don't know who else came and I was like, are you kidding? No, they weren't kidding. They were angry for Deacon. How <laughs> dare you not give her the pie off? They, they gave were, me a wedgie, I remember. That was unfortunate. <laughs> you don't have to fitting. you don't have to embarrass me, but okay, that's what happened. But yeah. uh yeah, they that's that's kind of what she did. But the other thing, and when you mentioned handsome, it, it I feel required to point out because and we had the same conversation sadly too recently about Wes it's you're inclined in situations like this to to uh you know sand off any rough edges and just you know uh put the put the halo on her and and, and Wes and obviously stand out human beings and everything but you know let's be very clear she was five foot nothing um <laughs> brassy broad who gave it as as well as she took it and there was nothing better than than going too far with her and get dave come on you can't do yeah. that you can't you can't do that in the in the text exchanges with her and handsome hank and how body and all that stuff it was she was above or at least as important as anything else i might point out about her she was goddamn hysterical mm -hmm. she yeah. was I always think about like, you know, she's she's this Korean girl who was adopted and grew up in like this white family w in the Midwest where, you know, she is as strongly political as, as anyone I knew. Like she would send you like little like flyers of giving you advice of how to vote and stuff. And I always think of like she was herself in that situation where, you know, her family and she loved her family so much, you know, like of much different political stripes and stuff. And like. She almost that is just to me like the sign of this unbreakable spirit that she she grew up standing out like her. She stood out in her in her own house and never changed her. If anything, it just like made her stronger. She was so like herself. And I don't know. There's nothing more you can you can ask for a person. We would always art like laugh, argue about golf and how she loved tweeting about golf and watching golf and. I would always say, what's more boring than golf? And she'd roll her eyes and say, what? And I would say, watching it on TV. <laughs> and, you know, I would just say that over and over again. And one time, rec pretty recently, actually, she's always been trying to get me into golf podcasts. And I was like, okay, well, what's more boring than watching golf on TV is listening to a podcast about it. But one day, it was pretty recently, she was like, she was like, Erica, you need to listen to this minute mark or whatever. And it was this golf podcast about the host or maybe he was a golfer or something around the PGA 
yeah, in the shower, you know, celebrating a win and hyper extended his knee doing some act in the shower alone. And she was like, if you're going to listen, oh. like she was so laugh, like laughing. And she had to call me after I listened to it to be like, I knew this <laughs> clip would get you into this golf podcast. And it's just oh, like man. the, the conversations that I've had with her over, you know, she's been such a staple in my career with my choices. And she would be that person that you could really go to for honest advice and you know, Dave, you and I and Emma were texting this weekend about it. And Emma got to see Deeker like you a lot of you did at, at Dad Summit. And Emma was like, you know, Deeker hugged me for literally 60 seconds. Like people started taking pictures of it because it was just such a long mm. hug. And it's I just Same. can't find the words to to say to even memorialize her because she is just such a a love and we're all so so worse off for not having she, her around she's gonna be missed and i and i'll just I, i'll just wrap it up this way and check thanks for coming on because um she loved you and and when i think about deeker and i think about uh the nfl like you're right there too um uh just you know we're learning the hard way about you know the passage of time and things that things change as time goes along and i it's not so long ago that i remember being at the shield and and having our, our Thursday night softball games and we'd play the game and usually we'd win. And then afterwards there, we'd all be sitting on the grass together, uh, drinking some beers. And I'm picturing West there with Lakeisha and their newfound love. And I'm picturing Deeker there because she came to all the games just to watch it and socialize and just knowing that that stuff is gone and it's not coming back and that, and that sucks, but um, it's just, it's great that we had these people in our life. Uh, so uh, Deeker, we love you, and uh, I don't think we need to say anything really else or, or sign out music or anything. Just um, we're, we're thinking about you, Deeker, and you'll, you'll be missed forever. Uh, we'll be back on Thursday. And then every single thought that you have and how you say what you mean and how you almost always mean something that's all about being straight and good. And I, I think most people miss that about you. And I watch them wondering how they can watch you bring their food and clear their tables and never get that they just met the greatest woman alive. And the fact that I get it makes me feel good about me.